Instead of doing the typical, here are all the degrees and certifications and technologies that you need to know to be successful in 2022, I'm gonna actually give you guys the real bit of advice and tell you what you actually need to stand out and land a job in IT in 2022, because that's what really matters. Okay, so we're actually gonna briefly cover those degrees, certs, and technologies. So if you wanna skip this part, I'll put that in the timestamps below, or if I remember, I will actually put like that time on this video somewhere here so that you can skip right to it. Degrees are not a hard requirement to work in IT. Some jobs are going to require a degree and some jobs will not require a degree. Some jobs will not care if your degree is in political science and some jobs might require that your degree actually be in something IT related. At this point in time, having a degree is not a terrible idea by any means. In fact, it will give you an advantage sometimes. And if you're looking to get in management, a degree is definitely preferred. But remember, it's not a hard requirement. You don't have to have one, but you can find some advantages. Certifications pretty much have the same stipulations as far as I'm concerned with the degrees. Some people are gonna care that you have them, some people won't care that you have them, and some people are going to require that you have a specific certification. As you've seen on the screen, these are some of the certifications that I would recommend if you're looking to just get started in this field. I'm not going to go over each one of them. You can find links to them in the description below. It's all stuff that I've covered before, but these are all very fundamental based types of certifications that can be helpful for any who's getting started out in this field. As far as the different technologies go, this part might be a little bit longer, so I'll put another timestamp if you wanna skip it, because you may have already watched other similar videos out there on YouTube where other people have talked about the top technologies that you need to learn in 2022, like you need to learn the cloud right now, and you need to learn Linux right now, and you need to learn security right now. I don't necessarily disagree with that. Those are all fun things that you should probably have an idea about. You don't need to learn them right now, however, but those are they're great suggestions for sure. The important thing to remember is in IT, you don't need to know everything to work in this field. You are never going to be expected to know everything. And that's one thing that you have to understand as quickly as possible. There's no possible way that you are going to need to know everything or it can possibly have the capacity to know all of the different things in IT. You'll see that you're gonna find different areas in this field that have more interest to you, and those are gonna be the areas that you gravitate to. So sometimes you might not need to know Linux, and you might not need to know the cloud, but some of the fundamentals on those can always be very, very helpful for you. I promise you that. So if you're just getting started out in this field, here's some of the information that you should really pick up on and learn that not a lot of people talk about or put enough focus on. And I promise you, the next bit of advice and tips that I give to you are going to be extremely important to you and your career, the future of your career. The first thing, learn how to take proper notes. Heath Adams would harp on me if I didn't mention this in this video because he talks about it all the time. It is extremely important. Note taking and documentation is a vital aspect in helping you become a better IT professional. Take notes and ask as many questions as you possibly can and take notes on the answers to all of those questions as well. Taking notes allows you to refer back to them at a later time. There is so much information to be learned and when you're getting into an IT job, there's going to be a lot of very specific information about that organization that you're going to learn and taking notes is going to be so helpful for you. Keith Adams has great videos about note taking. If you've ever taken any of his courses, you can definitely find it there. I'll post links in the description below if you guys are interested in that as well. Along the same lines of note taking and documentation is ticketing systems. You're gonna find that a lot of organizations who have an IT department will use a ticketing system. This is something very crucial that you can learn very early on. It's very easy to set up and, and kind of understand, but it's something that you will use on a day-to-day -day basis. A ticketing system not only helps you manage issues with users and helps you manage projects, but it can sometimes help you manage the different assets depending on what ticketing system is used in that environment. But a more important factor and why this ties into note keeping and documentation is that you can often find resolutions to past issues. So if you're coming into an environment, you can actually search through your ticketing system and look up past issues that have been resolved. So you can actually find out if somebody took proper notes, of course, what they did to resolve that issue. And this is where you can come into play with taking proper notes. When you start resolving issues in your organization, you can start putting in what you actually did to fix the issue. So when you have this weird issue that pops up, you know, six months down the road, you can refer back to your ticket from six months ago that actually laid out, hey, 
this is what I did to fix that issue. And then you're like giving future self and past self or whatever a pat on the back because you did a good job in taking notes and providing good documentation on how to fix the issue. So learn and understand that ticketing systems are going to be a vital aspect to getting started in IT and even taking your career further. Because yes, you will even utilize ticketing systems when you're a network engineer and you're gonna be looking up past tickets and past issues so that you can understand how some of these things have been resolved resolved in different environments. So definitely check that out. Here's a video that I created about ticketing systems already. There's free systems out there exist. There's zoho.com. It's in the cloud, absolutely free to set up. Or there's OS Ticket. You can download that and follow videos online to get that set up. But get hands on with that because it's really easy to do. And I think it's fairly easy to understand the process that goes through that. So check out my video and download these things or sign up for free or whatever. It's, it's all on you. The next thing is learning Active Directory. And this might come into play maybe after you go through some of the certifications that I had suggested, or once you get really familiar with virtualization and installing different operating systems and things like that, those are all pretty easy things to do and understand. And there are a ton of great videos out on YouTube that walk you through this. And I have a video that I'll link to you guys at the end of this as well, that will walk you through this entire process of setting up Active Directory, but just learn the fundamentals of it. What does Active Directory do? Why do we use it? How do you create? and edit a user and delete a user and why do we do these things? In this video right here, I walk you through how you can virtualize a Windows server, set up Active Directory and start configuring things there so that you can understand this system because you're gonna find that a lot of organizations utilize Active Directory to help manage their users and systems. So make sure you look into this because it is a vital aspect again to helping you get started and really getting you the knowledge that you need to know to hit the ground running. So check that out as well. Links in the description for that, of course, as well. There are videos out there that can actually help you set up Azure Active Directory, which is in the cloud. So you can actually do this for free. I'll link to some of those videos as well if you would like to learn more about Azure Active Directory and the cloud is interesting to you. You can take your learning down this path further by looking into things like managing users and groups and permissions, and of course, configuring group policy. So definitely take a look at some of those things if you're looking at learning a little bit more advanced things that, again, can definitely be very, very helpful for you. Now, the best thing that I've mentioned about some of these things in the last few minutes is these are great opportunities for you to take notes, to document everything that you've done. Document the processes that you went through to set up Active Directory. Keep great notes of that and then share them. And that's what really leads me to what this video is all about. It's 2022 and everything has changed, you know, completely in the last couple of years. It's nothing is in the same is the same that's been. Getting in IT, uh, it's not really the same as a used to be. I mean, getting into any job nowadays isn't the same that it used to be. You can no longer walk into a business and ask for a job application. You know, those days are definitely long gone. Everything has moved to the digital age. And, and you've seen this. It's been very, very apparent the past couple of years. Many things have gone digital. Many organizations have gone completely remote and it's changed things. Another thing that's changed with that is how people are being hired and discovered. You know, the entire uh, application process is done online. Like I said, you can't really go into a business anymore and ask for an application because they'll tell you apply online. And heck, most interviews are done online now, right? So we can't really escape that. And then the world really has just transitioned even further into kind of like this digital age. And you may have seen this in the surge of content creators in the last couple of years. And that's done good things and has done bad things for sure. But the most important takeaway that we can get for this and for the love of like everything, I'm not, I'm not telling you to become a content creator by any means. Don't, don't take what I'm about to tell you as that's, I'm telling you to become a content creator because that's that's really not the point. I mean, you can if you want, but it's not, it's not at all what I'm saying, I, I promise you. But what I'm saying is, I'm telling you that people are watching. You, people are consuming, absorbing information all over the world and we're, really, we're able to display that to everybody all over the world and people are watching, including potential employers. And again, I'm not telling you to be a content creator by any means, and I, I'm asking you to be a teacher. I'm asking you to help people and to show off what you're capable of doing. And there's so many different projects you can do, like what, like the Active Directory project that we listed above that can help you, you know, build a home lab and help give yourself more experience. And you can and should be documenting all of these different projects that you do. But the next thing you could do is take it to the next level and download something like OBS. That's free to use. You can record your screen. You can even record your webcam and your microphone. Make a video and explain what you're doing and walk somebody through it. 
It doesn't have to be the best quality. It's not about the production quality. You don't need all these fancy lights and a nice microphone to make this happen. It's about the, the quality of the content that you're putting into the video, the quality of the information that you're sharing. That's all people want to see. And you can share this with people. And this is going to help you. Again, I'm not telling you to be a content creator. The whole point of you doing this is to be able to show off to people what you're capable of doing. And it also could be a great avenue to help show you maybe your personality, to show the type of person that you are. And doing things like this, I've seen hundreds, if not thousands of people have success just by creating videos like this or creating documentation, creating a GitHub and putting the documentation on the things that they've done, how they set things up, how they manage their, their different networks and different projects and things like that. It's phenomenal the amount of, of, of information that I've just seen explode in the last couple of years of people sharing what they are doing and they have seen so much success from this. This all kind of falls into becoming your own brand, which is essentially what we're talking about. And if you want more information on building your own brand, I highly suggest you guys go check out Kanika Tolliver. She is like the queen of Twitter space. And she always has like hundreds of people in her Twitter spaces where she's talking about very similar topics to what we're talking about here. So please go check her out because I know for a fact that a lot of information that between her and other people that she has on her, her shows there, they are very, it's going to be very helpful for you. So please go check out that out. Links in the description below for that as well. And of course I've harped on LinkedIn for years, but you, you guys have just no idea what I've seen come from that platform. Like the amount of success that I've seen from people connecting on that platform has been phenomenal. If you haven't had that success, maybe you didn't try hard enough, or maybe you need to take some of these tips from this video that we're giving you and apply those and follow Kanika Tolliver because a lot of the tips that she will give you can definitely help you as well. But LinkedIn is huge. Build connections, relationships with people in all the areas that you're interested in. If you're looking to become a network engineer, start connecting with other network engineers. Start becoming part of the community. I made a video a couple of months ago now at this point maybe where I talked more, a little bit more in depth about LinkedIn, why it's important. So I'm just gonna link you to that video because I'm not gonna harp on that even more in this video, but please engage on LinkedIn because it's huge and share the content that you're creating. Share the videos that you do, share the documentation that you do. People want to see that become part of these communities and converse with people. Please, this is one of the most important takeaways that I think you need to take from the entire video here is LinkedIn is more important than you may ever realize until you really get on that platform and take advantage of it. So please follow that bit of advice above everything else. Now, other things that you could do to kind of help you get an advantage to getting into the field and help you build connections. So along the lines of LinkedIn is you, there's a website called meetup.com. You can find local meetups in your area. And the meetups that you're gonna look for are of course related to IT. I know there's a lot of cybersecurity meetups. There's some networking meetups. See what's available in your area and connect with those people as well. It's maybe going to be in person still sometimes, who knows, but definitely take a look at that. Try to find people in your area that you can connect with and you know maybe have coffee with and have conversations with. And the next thing along the same lines here with meeting people, connecting with them, have a virtual coffee with these people because they're all gonna be on Discord. There's a ton of great Discord servers out there that exist. I'll put some of them in the description below, but connect with these people, learn the things that they're doing. Understand that a lot of these people are in the same boat as you and there's so much information that you can learn from them. Another thing that I would suggest doing is building a website. Graham Helton here has shown us how to build a website for free essentially, so I'm going to link to his first. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely check that out. But the method that I'm most familiar with is using like a hosting provider. I've used this company called HostGator for years. I'm actually using them for another project right now. The setup process is really, really easy. So click the link in the description. You go and sign up for a plan. Depending on how many years you sign up for, it'll be like X amount of dollars. All you need to do once you go through this process, you even get like a free domain if you buy like X amount of years or whatever. I think it's like a year you get a free domain, which is great. But you'll have basically almost everything set up for you. It'll give you a login. It'll let you quickly and easily install WordPress. And WordPress is used freaking like everywhere. And there are probably millions, if not billions of pretty cool uh, WordPress themes out there that you can download and put on your WordPress site. 
but this is really easy to set up. And there are like, again, probably millions of tutorials out there that can show you how to walk through setting up WordPress. So I would just highly suggest going through that. It does not take that much time to get this set up. So go ahead and look up some videos, but get a website up and running because you can use this again to show off what you're doing. Share your videos on there, document the things that you're doing, have a digital resume available for people, to tell them how they can contact you, tell them what you're looking to do. There's a lot of great opportunity with having a website. And again, it's another great part to helping you build your brand and who you are and getting a presence out there so people can discover you and see you. And I can't tell you the amount of times having knowledge of HTML and WordPress has helped me in jobs that I've had or clients that I've worked with. It's been like a phenomenal skill just for whatever reason to have knowledge of. It's always been brought up in every single job that I've worked in and been helpful for me. So one of the big things with building a website is it allows you to centralize where you're keeping all of the assets and content and things that you're creating, but it also allows you to provide a really easy link on your resume. So nowadays, most of your resumes are sent through the PDF format or the doc format, God knows why, but you can also include a link on your resume. So put that link to your website in your resume, or you can create an email address through your control panel on HostGator there. You can do uh, just add a new email address or add a forwarder even, which is really easy to do. So you could just create a new email address of your name at your new URL.com. And you can just have that forward to your regular email address. And you can use that email address on your resume. But I would put a link to your website on your resume that shows off the things that you are doing. So we've covered a lot of different things. We've covered certs, degrees, technologies, building a website, building a brand essentially, getting on LinkedIn. But now I wanna talk about getting experience because as far as anybody's concerned in IT, or especially hiring managers, the most important thing is experience. Everybody wants experience. So how do you get experience? This is what I'm gonna tell you right now. These are the most important things that you can try right off the bat to get experience. So first of all, not only are you getting experience from all these different projects and labs and things that you're building because you're documenting them, you're creating videos that are showing people what you can do, or you're sharing you know, the different documentation that you've created out on the internet, you have the GitHub available so people can see the things that you've done, that's great ways to show that you have some type of experience maybe even some type of hands-on experience with some of these things. It's one of the best, if not easiest ways to show that you have experience if you don't have actual experience. Next thing you wanna do is reach out to every single nonprofit organization in your area. Pick up the phone, call them, email them, message them on social media. I'm gonna read off my screen so I get this right for you because this is something along the lines that you could probably say that could be helpful. Just tell them who you are, tell them that you're interested in volunteering and that you're trying to get experience in the information technology field. And ask them, is there anyone that you can speak with in regards to any available opportunities to help with any projects or maintenance of systems that need to be done? It's worth a shot. Contact all the nonprofits and tell them that. The next part of that is use that same line on all the local mom and pop computer shops. I know I live in a very small town and we have like three different computer shops. So I'm pretty sure wherever you exist in this world, there's probably a computer shop that's pretty close to you. Just go in there and tell them the same thing. Hey, I'm looking to volunteer, trying to get experience. Use the same line and see what happens. That's the next best step that I can tell you to kind of help you get experience. Please note though, they may not pay you and people are gonna be up in arms about this all over the place that I just said that, but like you can do it or you can't. I probably wouldn't do it, but if you're in a position that you can do that, go ahead and do it because that experience is going to be very, very helpful for you. Now this next bit of advice I need to caution you about and you need to consider the seriousness of this. And I'm reading from the screen because I want to make sure I get all this right. But I would honestly advise you to talk to a lawyer and the city, town, state that you live in to understand the rules and the regulations that you need to do and follow to do what I'm about to tell you. Now, again, everywhere in the world has different regulations related to performing work on other people's property and such. I'm not a freaking lawyer, so I don't know all the jargon. So I'm not giving you any type of legal advice. So please seek somebody who can give you better and more detailed um, information regarding these different maybe laws, regulations, and rules in your area. The point of what I'm trying to tell you right now is that you need to cover your butt. So do as much CYA as possible. Um, the best bit of advice that I can tell you about all this is maybe get insurance to, to protect you. Like that's probably the best bit of advice. But again, contact a lawyer. 
I'm not one of them. So if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm telling you that you can do computer repair on the side. This is something that I did many years ago, like when Craigslist was like a really big thing. I would find ads for people, or I would find requests for people looking for computer repair. I would create ads for computer repair. And that's how I started building like a client base. And this was 12, 13, 14 years ago now. This is a long time ago. And it worked out well for me. Uh, and it, it, it was a great way to get experience in some of these things. And it was a great way to build connections with people. And I know plenty of people personally who were able to build amazing connections and find even better jobs through doing consulting work just like this. Now, Craigslist isn't like the same beast that it used to be, but Facebook and the metaverse have these amazing groups over there. Uh, they're often found like as spring cleaning exchanges or garage sales, like groups or like different things like that, cleaning out your attic type of stuff. Not an Eminem reference, but it could be. But anyway, you can find those all on Facebook. And I see people all the time in there posting that they need help with a computer or other people in there saying that they can do computer repair. That's a great opportunity for you to chime in and try to help people. And I normally don't give this advice to people. I don't normally like giving this advice. I really, really don't because there's so many different things that you can screw up on somebody's personal equipment, and if you don't know what you're doing, uh, it could be really bad. So you need to get to a point where you're gonna be comfortable with some of these things. Just starting out, I would try to stick with very basic things. And again, if you feel at all uncomfortable with this, definitely do not do it. But there are many people I've seen throughout the years have wild success with this. So just, again, keep in mind, you have a lot of things to uh, consider before you do this. And of course, if you do a great job for people, it's a perfect opportunity to ask them if you can use them as a reference because you're gonna wanna start building a list of references of people that you've worked with, especially on their computer equipment or even business equipment. If you get to that point, definitely start trying to get as many reference points as you possibly can. The next thing you can do is up your interview game. If you're having trouble landing the job, your interview game needs to be upped for sure. So I have this entire video right here that lays out step-by-step -step this process of going through the interview from before you even step foot into the interview to tips and advice that you can be doing during the interview and what you should be doing after the interview. It's a solid gold mine over there, I promise you. The tips that you'll find there are gonna be very valuable for you. So make sure you check that out as well. So through all these tips and resources that I provided you in this video, I think you're going to have a very successful 2022. So good luck to you.